Journal bearings are bearings where the axle and the collar sitting on the axle aren't really lubricated. And so those frictional forces between them need to be analyzed. So what we have here is we have a cross section of the axle here and P is the force of maybe the collar pushing down on it or just the weight of, or the force of gravity pushing down on the axle. And then the reaction force on this side of the axle, um, which is slightly off center from uh, the middle of the axle, we have moment M, which is the moment needed to overcome those frictional forces. And now the reason why R, our reaction force here, is off-centered is because, well, I have a little example here, a demonstration of a piece of cardboard and a little tube. And if we put it in there and start to rotate it, we notice it starts to climb up the side of the cardboard here and that's due to the friction that allows it to kind of roll up the thing before it stops and then it overcomes the force of friction. When it's rolling up, it's static friction because it's not slipping. And then once it gets to this point, it starts slipping and it becomes kinetic friction. And so the reaction force, when it climbs up the side, the reaction force moves over a little bit and that's why R is offset from the center of the axle. So then we have this angle here that it makes from being um, perpendicular or straight up and down. The angle it makes between that and the center is called um, the angle of kinetic friction. And we notate that with phi. And then R is the radius of the axle. And R sub F is the radius the, of the circle of friction. And the circle of friction is, or the reaction force is tangent to the radius of the circle of friction. And so summing moments about the center of the axle, we get this equation here, where M equals the reaction force, big R, capital R, times by the radius of the axle times by the sine of phi. And the way we get phi is we can take the tangent of phi and that equals mu. Now I'm not going to go into the derivation of that, but it basically comes from there's a frictional force here that is tangent to the circle and a normal force there. And the friction divided by the normal force is mu. And that's where you get that equation. Um, then you have the radius of the circle of friction. And if you look at this, look at the trig there, you'll see what that comes from. And then you have these two approximation equations. And because angle phi is usually a pretty small angle, we can approximate it by saying that sine of phi is equal to mu. And I won't go into the derivation of that either, but it comes from this. And then using that, we can plug it, plug mu in for sine of phi and we get that m approximately equals r um, times by r times by mu. So these are these two are pretty close. And in an example video, I go through an example problem using both methods, and you can kind of see how close they are from being off from each other. So if you want to go to the example problem video, you can click on this video link. And I've also got another example video that goes over both rolling friction and journal, frictional forces on journal bearings all in one problem. And if you wanna click, if you wanna watch that video, you can click on this video link. And I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit that like button. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comments and I will reply to them. I've also got my website up and going and you can go find it at gostudentengineering.com. And so if you found this video helpful, hit that like button and please subscribe.